Today on Stance Academy, I show you how to ruin your ride with a grinder and a set of spacers. That's right, everybody. Today is all about stance, and I do have a problem here with my Lexus CT200H, which is my daily driver. I showed you this in a previous video, and uh, these wheels that I installed on here, I do love. I got a good bargain on them. However, they are a plus 50 offset. And as you can see, they are sunken battleship, way too sunken. I tried to run a five mil spacer, and uh, you can see, judging by the different lug nuts that I have on here, it stripped two of them because it just didn't want to tighten properly. It didn't feel proper. So I was like, all right. So I decided, you know what? I got to bite the bullet and go with a 15 mil spacer here and stance this bad boy out to the point where it's probably going to rub fenders. It's going to ruin my drive and it might vibrate. I think what I forgot to mention off the top was that the reason why I did strip those uh, lug nuts was I did not have enough thread engagement. And that was part of the reason why I said, you know what, I'm going with a set of these 15 mil spacers that have the studs and they've got these nice little small guys right here. Um, the trouble with going with 15 mils is you can see they protrude my stock stud sticks out quite a bit here. And that wouldn't be an issue if you have a set of wheels that aren't completely flat on the backside. And guess what my Volks are? That's flat right, completely flat on the backside. <laughs> so that means I am gonna have to cut these, which, um, is the reason why I could be ruining my car because if I have any type of wheel shake, that's my biggest concern with spacers like these. If you get a little bit of wheel shake, then uh, there's no going back at this point. I'm not gonna be able to say, well, I'm gonna pull these off, put my stock wheels back on or just run them, you know, all hella sunk. So at this point, what we need to do is just say, I'm committing to this craft and I'm gonna make these work. Thankfully, these Novus Tech Novus Tech uh, spacers are good quality, and as you can see, they're hub centric, which you know theoretically means no we're gonna have yeah. we're, we're gonna have no vibrations. It's all gonna work out. That's I, I'm setting my mind to that. Keep you telling know? yourself that, PP. As you gotta project. You gotta project. How are you gonna dial in like nine degrees of camber now? <sighs> that's the next step. Well, right? it's so fu funny thing, DP. Uh, on Amazon, you can't buy anything other than like an inch worth of spacer right. so i was like oh you know if i went with an inch we could totally go hella stance on this thing but no 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 it's a daily driver it's conservative would have made for a funny video but you know i want to still continue to drive this car because i do love it Man, that grinder made easy work of those studs. Look at that, holy smokes. And uh, I did notice something. By the way, guys, you gotta clean your, your mating surface here too if you want a uh, shake-free experience with these spacers. Um, if you put it on, there's a little bit of give here. Is this enough, DP? That's gonna give me wheel shake? What, what? Yeah, I know what you mean, like the hub-centric Yeah, it's fit just, isn't... it's off and yeah it's, you know maybe there was a little bit of corrosion here what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, go with the hack method of uh, adding a piece of tape around here i think that's the way to go now the average person would just leave the tape like this but i'm going to take a lot of care and i'm going to use a razor blade to trim it off here in all seriousness though guys i don't think the tape does much because it will compress but let me show you look oh that's nice that's nice look no more play it's all psychological. Oh man, that's so Soon good. As you track that down, the tape is done. No, 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 no. This is, I'm telling you, all these small little things are going to lead. Even me making sure that every stud that I cut is the same length so it doesn't cause any type Ooh, of the imbalance. weight yeah. imbalance. So, you know, I, I, I'm trying hard here. It's science, folks. Ah, the torque amount, I've got this set to 85 foot pounds. We couldn't find much on the internet that told us. Uh, what the, the proper amount of torque this is. It just says kind of torque it to your stock lug nuts. These ones, you know, don't have as much surface area. So I don't know if you gotta go more or should you, should I be using Loctite? 
Somebody, I think, mentioned in one of the threads to use Loctite on this. Since I did ruin a set of lug nuts, I've got a new set here. These low profile dormant acorn ones. I picked up a set of center caps here for my ride from Amazon. Because really, why would you go out and spend $250 on, on real center caps when you can buy these, these cheap plastic ones and not have them match your, your titanium silver or hyper silver, whatever this is. That's exactly what happened. I was like, I can't buy these in silver. I don't really wanna try to paint them. Maybe when I redo these for next year, I'll do that, but right now I can't. So I'm running with these. I think they're better. DP, what do you think? Are they better than not, not having those, that ugly, you know, centerpiece or the, the stub showing from the, the drive shaft? Yeah, yeah, they're better than the stub, but I, yeah, I mean, to me, silver would be better. It's kind of a bit of like a, a dog's nose. I know, like a, man. A nose and black. It, it's kind of funny. It's, well, with so. the black lug nuts, there's something happening there. Maybe, maybe, maybe. It's not so. terrible. Holy smokes, I don't think I stanced my car enough here. I feel like I could have gone with like a, a 20 mil spacer at least, maybe a 25, yeah. I was joking. Wouldn't have had to put in all that work cutting those studs. Wow, even in the rear, obviously this car still has to settle a bit because it's on the, uh, the hoist, but there is a reason why it is on the hoist and that is because this front lip, if you guys uh, recall from a previous episode, is completely destroyed. So I do have a new unit that we're gonna replace this with to make this thing, you know, look proper again. So let's peel this old lip off here and see what it looks like underneath. And this thing took a good hit. I did uh, do the zip tie fix, as you can see here, which, you know, held it together quite well. Zip ties are always such a, a good victory that way. I did also see use a little bit of paint here just to try to cover it up. I don't know what I should do with this lip at this point. Should I fix it and use it as a spare or is this thing too far gone? Like it's got a lot of cracks, man. This looks like it's gonna be a lot of work for somebody. I mean, anybody that knows fiberglass can probably fix it somewhat easily. Now here's a quick way to remove a lot of the double-sided tape. You can see it is a nightmare. I just went through with a plastic razor blade, just removed the top layer. And this stuff is super, super hard to remove. I've got my 3M uh, adhesive removal wheel here. And it actually works exceptionally well. You can see, it kind of like balls it up and then continues to take it off and you're left with that. I am going to forego the 3M tape because this thing is such a tight precision fit here that I just find it doesn't really need it. I have two screws that need to go into the backside here, but once I can pull this thing on here, you can see it's like, yeah, it's, it's tight, tight, man. It's, it's really tight, fit. but it's, it's such a good fit where it's like, why should I bother? Oh man. These were obviously made off of an original Look at that. mold, right? Or a car I, off of Yeah, something mold. like that. Like there's just, there's no need in my opinion. Once it's on here, look at, it's just, it's so good. Yeah. It's so tight. Yeah, look at that. There's, yeah. there's certainly nothing needed. So the only thing now is you've got this nice shiny lip and you've got this bumper that, uh, that has seen the beats now. It's just crazy what, like Luke painted this bumper, what DP, man. A couple years ago now? Maybe two years ago, yeah. And just the constant daily commute, it just beats it up so bad. Even though, like look at the headlights, the headlights are so peppered now, but uh, you know, that is all year round commuting here in, uh, in the GTA area. DP, you got into my head. <laughs> you, you planted that seed, you said to me, I don't like the way those black center caps look. And you know what, at first I really didn't care. I was like, whatever, it'll look better than this. But then I was like, ah, you're probably right. You know, if someone looks at it, it is very polarizing. It's like I didn't put enough effort into it. 
So uh, my Hack Academy continues here. What I did is I found this internal exhaust coating from Eastwood. So this isn't even a real paint, but it was the closest match that I had kicking around here. And I painted the cap, as you can see, and I put some clear coat over it to kind of match the crappy clear on this. And lo and behold, the color is close. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not and bad. with enough dirt, once I drive this car for a bit, it's, yeah. as you can see, it's gonna get dirty and hopefully it'll just mask it and become one. But I do think it looks better than the black. For so sure it does, yeah. you did me a solid, DP. There you go. My, my chirping finally paid yes. off. Well, after getting this car outside and looking at it, I think the 15 mil was the way to go. It certainly looks so, so much better. I could have gone 20 or even 25, I feel like, but you know, it would have been that stance life, which is which is what not I'm not about, especially as a daily driver. And having that front lip on the front of the car, you know, it looks good, man. I'm actually proud of this vehicle, how good it looks now. Before it just, there was always something off about it, whether it was beat up, or that beat up lip or the wheels were too sunken. So I'm really, really happy with the results here. Now there is one last remaining thing, and that is if this car is going to, if the steering wheel or the car is gonna shake on the highway, because that's where really that critical, like 60 to 70 miles per hour, or like 100 to 115 K is where you get that shake when you have uh, wheel spacers on. So I'm gonna leave you with a clip now of me driving home, fingers crossed that everything works out. Yes, I am happy to report that. Look at this, guys. No shake at all. Thank you. Thank you so much, wheel spacers. Hub-centric stuff from Novus Tech certainly looks like it worked well because, man, the steering wheel is perfect. I have no vibration at all, which was the main hiccup and, and worry for me. And that is now crossed off the list. All right, guys, that is going to be a wrap on this one. Uh, certainly post in the comments, did you enjoy a bit of the, uh, the Hack Academy or did we just pack it in on this one? We shouldn't be publishing episodes like this. Certainly let us know in the comments. Uh, we will be back to more of our regular types of builds and tuning coming up very shortly. So as always, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoy the video, certainly think about uh, hitting that like button and subscribing for more of this type of weird content that could happen or if you guys hate it, it won't.